DTLR Radio. Hey, y'all, how y'all feeling, man? What's up? All right, so let's give Nipsey a round of applause to start for our album that's going to live Thank y'all. longer than we're going to be here. So congratulations, Nip. Thank you for that, bro. So look, um, this is a living room effect. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have fun. Fire we're going to talk. Yeah, the that. fire pit. Yeah, yeah. It's literally lit. You know, Nipsey got it literally lit in here. So look, this is Hustle Talk. We're going to have Hustle Talk with Nipsey Hustle. I like that. You like that? That sounds good. Detail our radio style. Good. Yeah. So I got to let you. Oh, yeah. By the bar, keep the drinks flowing because we're going to have a good time. I need uh, some 1942, man, while we up here. Let's get some you know 1942. We at home, ain't we? And let me get family, right? We could yeah. pull up, right? All Is right. it all right if I get some Ciroc? I'm going to get course, some Ciroc. Of course, Ciroc. You know, we Ciroc yeah. boys. Blue Dot. Shout out to Puff. You already yeah. know. That too. That too. He said the hang. You know. say. Do say. All of that. You black on. love. Yeah. I but feel that, like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he smacked already. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got to have fun. This yeah. is a family affair. Yeah. So, look. Uh, one thing, um, you know, Nipsey's fresh off that All-Star Weekend takeover. I actually was out there, and this man, you couldn't go nowhere. From when you landed at LAX, it was a vibration. Who else went to All-Star LA? Anybody? Anybody travel? That's right. That's From right. when you got off the plane <laughs> to when you hit Sunset. Yeah. Everybody's whip bumping that victory lap. Yes, sir. So I just want to say that you took over All-Star Weekend, and you showed your city love. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how important is that for you? Big weekends like that, where you're gonna get a lot of people from around the country, around the world, yeah. and in perfect timing, you drop this album. Yes, sir. And you're everywhere between Thursday and Sunday. I feel like you took yep. over the whole thing. Yeah. How important is that to you? Uh, I mean, I gotta, I gotta thank my team, All Money In and the Atlantic team, because it was a team effort. Everybody worked real hard, you know, to saturate the city with billboards, posters. The radio team had us on, on Smash. Um, you know, my, my personal team, we had a big concert on Thursday, which was the day before the album release. Um, and just everybody that was involved, it, it was a team effort. But like you said, the whole country was in L.A. So we was actually planning on dropping the album in December because it was done and we had a, we had a, uh, a master, we was ready to go. But uh, one of the executives at Atlantic, Julie Greenwald, was like, you know, All-Star Weekend in L.A. In February, we could give you a long runway to promote and then um, we could deliver on All-Star Weekend. That just made the most sense to me. That's what you call perfect timing. Perfect timing, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Thursday, so you opened up the Global Spin Awards. Yeah. That yep. was crazy. Yeah. Shout out to Revolt. Yeah, and Puff. Puff threw me that alley-oop, man. Uh -huh. Shout out to Puff for that, man. That was a good, that was a good look, for yeah. sure. And then yeah. you killed it at the spot on Sunset. There was a spot on Sunset. The Palladium. Palladium. Yeah, that was my, my, concert, my concert with Tidal. Crazy. Yeah, thank Sold you. Sold out. That's online, too. Y'all can go on Tidal and watch that back if y'all want to see the live. Victory Lap, the only show we've done since the album's been out. Yeah. And then I got to say, I was on, Fair, is it Fairfax? Fairfax? Yeah. Shopping, yep. you know. You had a guy, there was a guy with a big oversized finish, line, finish, finish flag, a you know what I'm saying? A marathon flag, yeah. That's what you call grassroots promotion. So for all the, you know, artists in here, inspiring artists, like, Nip went back to the streets for real. This guy was in the middle of the street on Fairfax waving this flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Victory Lap logo on it. Yeah. So yeah. I want to say salute again for going back to the streets with that. Nah, we, that's, that's, that's how we grew up getting excited about album releases. We saw the posters. We saw the, the people in the street, stickers going up, teams with T-shirts. You know, even before Thursday, we had a, a strip club event in L.A., the big strip club called Ace of Diamonds out there. And we pulled up the All Money and Brinks truck. Everybody hopped out the back of the Brinks truck with the Victory Lap shirts on. And that's just like old school street promotion that got us excited about album releases when we was younger. So we wanted to go back to that. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, the internet is, is big, of course, right now. That's, yep. you know, the streams and everything. But you actually, I feel like, went back to touching the people, the personal touch. 100%. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So with this album... It's called Victory Lab. Yeah. And you know, your whole theme with your existence in this game is like, it's a race, right? So I feel it's a like marathon. it's a marathon. Yeah. I feel like you're running against yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to beat your time. So how important is it for you not to compete with anybody else, but try to be the best version of you in the game? Um, I think that's something I brought from just hustling and from the streets. You know, everybody's at a different level when you're growing up and when you're trying to establish yourself and I seen people in my circle and just my peers take their eye off what they was doing and get focused on what the next person was doing and step outside their character and end up getting spanked for it. You know what I mean? Instead of sticking to what they do. Everybody ain't a hustler, everybody ain't a robber, but everybody got their own niche. And what I observed is that you get so 
caught up in what you see the next person with, you start competing, and then you step outside of your, your niche and your, and your character and your comfort zone. So I, I equate that to music. You know, you got niggas that, excuse me, you got people that got big hit records and, you know, signed a big artist and they got there quick. And you know, that's to each his own. That wasn't my path. My path was to take the stairs, you know what I mean? Flip my sack in the mixtape game over and over and over and then establish myself to the level I've been established to where I could drop my first album through my company as a partnership with Atlantic. But at the same time, you know, it's a lot going on around you that'll, that'll, that'll take you off of your, your plan. That was always my original plan. And so I always say that it's like a, yeah, we're playing against ourselves. It's a game of golf. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to get the right. best score possible right. with yourself. Right. So with Victory Lab, let's, let's give them another round of applause while we hear this family. The album is crazy. Thank if, you, you. if you ain't got the album yet, yeah, get that, man. You know what, you what I'm saying? saying? Grab that, man. It's a, you just have your top down, if it, even in the winter. You put that top down, and it's a real Cali vibe to it. Yes, sir. But I feel like everybody can relate because you're talking about hustling and motivating, and that's everybody that we got in this room. So give yourselves a round of applause. You know, we all motivating each other, inspiring each other. So, Nip, yeah. let's talk the businessman, Nipsey yeah. Hustle. Yes, sir. How many businesses you got now at this point? The clothing line? The, 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 you got the, the weed shop over yeah, there. Yeah. You have the community outreach joints you got in Crenshaw. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Uh, I, I, I ain't count, but we got, we got the, the, it's called an inner city co-work incubator. And it's, the name of it is Vector 90. If y'all got the internet, y'all can check out the details on what Vector 90 is. We got the Marathon Store which is my retail uh, brand. We got tell, tell us about that, because DTLR, we your fashion, your lifestyle, we yeah. all about fresh gear. Tell us how you came up with that joint right there, the Marathon. Yeah, so the Marathon store is, um, I kind of was inspired by the Apple store. You know how we all, we all got Apple products. We could buy from Best Buy, you could buy from Target. But when you go into the Apple store, the colors is the same as the Apple packaging. The vibe is the same. They got a certain aesthetic. They got the glass stairs. They got a certain type of employee. They got the genius bar. So they got their old take on retail. So as, as a hip hop artist, I didn't see no, no hip hop artists with their own retail aesthetic and they retail, uh, you know, network. So I was like, it'd be dope to establish my own retail space that when we drop albums, we can go to Best Buy, we can go to Target, we can also go to the Marathon store. And when you get in there to buy the album, you surrounded with other products. I see Crenshaw shirts in the crowd and mm -hmm. Marathon yeah. hats and all that. So them is some of the products you can get at the store. Um, and also we got a, a apparel line called the Marathon Clothing, which we sell online and at the store. So that's three. Um, we got a, a restaurant we developing. It's called Baba Leo's. It's, uh, you chefing up? Are you cooking in the back? I'm not cooking. Nah, <laughs> I don't know if y'all want me to cook y'all food. <laughs> but nah, it's, um, it's a fish market, you know what I mean? us as black people and you know just uh we, we we buy a lot of fish we don't own too many fish markets though you know that's something that we spend a lot of money on but we don't own a lot of fish markets you know so it's a healthy take on it but we also got fried stuff and all that and we're gonna open that in the next couple months it's named after my grandfather too his okay name leo no yeah the legacy so, aspect you're leaving a legacy yeah hopefully that's god willing you know um then we got like you said the marathon og which is a uh, a kush uh, brand of Kush and also a dispensary and a, a grow house. Um, and I, know, I know a lot of y'all can appreciate that, right? So, so my boy right here <laughs> for sure. He the troublemaker yeah. already. Look at it. He got yeah, his medical good. card and all. Y'all come to LA, just Google Marathon OG to get y'all the address. Um, we got the agency. You know, he brought up the Marathon Agency. It's a it's a creative marketing and branding company that um you know for clothing brands, artists, record labels, you know what I mean? Um, any, any type of company that need to communicate the value of their product to the public, they can come holler at the uh, Marathon Agency. We came up with the Proud to Pay campaign, which was when I sold my album for $100. Um, and so it's just a creative marketing and branding agency, which is myself, Karen Civil, Steve-O, and uh, George Paniche. He's in the crowd with us tonight. Yo, Nipsey just named like a whole dictionary worth of businesses make some noise for this black entrepreneur right here black excellence thank y'all we, we are in black history month so yeah. we gotta we gotta commemorate and honor a person like this love man. that, that didn't become a product of his environment or, right. or become you know what i'm saying a victim of his circumstances but he looked at his past and he said you know something i, I could do greater especially with my voice so Absolutely. who inspires you Nick? who inspires you man you know my big brother was my biggest inspiration i grew up under a hustler a real 
Yeah, Black Sam, y'all know about it, that's right. Yeah, so I ain't really had no choice. I, I used to wanna go play, and my brother would make me, you know, stay down and, and keep grinding as a kid, whether it was cutting grass or, you know what I mean, uh, mowing lawn, watering grass, whatever he was doing, raking leaves, whatever as young kids. Hustling. Yeah, and he was also somebody that always was saving money. He always understood saving early. When I was trying to spend mine on CDs in the Source magazine, he was he saved a thousand dollars when I was like seven. I thought that was incredible. You know, you know he was like nine or ten and had a stack. I thought he was rich because he had a G. Um, so yeah, my big brother, and then um, all the examples of people that took the game and flipped it, like Master P, Jay Prince, you know, Birdman and Slim, Jay Z, Dame Dash, Biggs, uh, Irv Gotti, everybody that you know what I'm saying just took the game and flipped it. Yeah, that too. I'm, I'm inspired by myself and my team as well. Yeah, but everybody that took something and flipped it and made it work for sure. more than what they started with. So with the album, let's go back to the album real quick. So you have a lot of features, you know, Kendrick Lamar and Puff. And me, I work with Puff on the brand ambassador side with Ciroc and DeLeon. So yes, I see sir. that side of Puff more, right? Yeah. Been in the studio, but I want to get your take on what it was like to work with Puff on the music side. This Puff, not 90s bad boy, this Puff. Yeah. Talk, talk us through that experience. Yeah, you know, the convo that led to us getting in the studio, um, you know, Cassie and my girls, close friends. So we was at Cassie's birthday, and me and Puff just was drinking, having a convo. He like, I'm in L.A. I got the studio, man. Tap in with me. Y'all was drinking Ciroc, right? Of course. Yeah, of course. And De Leon, you know what I'm saying? And Duce, you know, that's part of the family. Of course. Yeah, but, you know, um, I'm a type of person. I don't like pushing myself on the people or, you know, I, I, I ain't never came up like that. So when he was like, inviting like nip come by the studio i'm out here you it was know organic I mean? it was organic yeah it was like you know it was an invitation it was a personal invite so i took him up on his invite and i brought the album through and i pressed play and then he was just really inspired by what i was working with and we had a real convo about you know biggie and about how biggie was a street artist and, and was really gutter really for real but was able to translate that into being a, a, a 10 time platinum diamond selling artist and i think that had a lot to do with having a person like puff to just translate and, and throw you the alley-oops, like more money, more problems. If you really listen to that record, Biggie had one verse on there. You know what I mean? So somebody came up with the sample, the Diana Ross sample. Somebody came up with saying, I want you to take this Diana Ross hook and, and say more money, more problems, because Biggie said that in an interview. Produce, so you saying that there's a curating aspect to this, yeah, like the behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, definitely. So he, he helped you with that record, the uh, uh, real, real- Young niggas. Young niggas. Yeah, definitely. So that's rap, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, I was like, you know, I would love to have somebody think it from that perspective as I write records and I'm an artist and play the artist role, have somebody watching and listening and being like, I know how we could take this to the next level. I see what you missing. And so Puff was like, let's go, man. I've been, he was like, I've been in the, in the, in the, in the alcohol space and in the TV space. He like, but music is my passion. You always want to go back to the music. Yeah, hundred percent. So, you know, shout out to Puff, man. He, he gave a lot of his energy to the album, a lot of time. Definitely. Obviously, he was doing the four. He was on network TV. I mean, uh, yeah, mainstream network TV. But every he took the time out because yeah. he, he sees something in you. So yeah, so shout definitely. out to Puff. Yeah, so another feature that stands out is, your, your, you know what I'm saying, another California YG. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Last time that I checked, tearing yeah. it up. Yeah, Y'all yeah, like yeah. the record? Last time that I checked That's right. it. Clap it up there. You that's know what a saying? banger. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, you know what I'm saying, you being... On this side, YG being on this side, if we talking sides, how is it? How is it in LA for the two of y'all to collaborate? Wait, meaning, what does it mean for the community, to the young, you know, gangsters coming up in the hood, to see you being a crib and him being a blood coming together to really make a positive change? Um, I mean, I answer that in a lot of ways. First, we men first before anything. So you might have somebody that's from your section that you don't really feel the type of person he is. He might be next door to you. That don't mean y'all gonna see eye to eye on principles and on morals and how y'all move. Then you might have somebody on the other side of the tracks that's, you know, a lot like you and a lot uh, got the qualities that you respect. You know, um, and also, you know, everybody that is from LA, been through the street thing, probably didn't hit the county jail before. And in there, you know, you might be in a dorm that's integrated and it'll be other races in there. And it's, it's, it's really racial in jail. So you might be fighting back to back with a blood and he might be the reason you don't get your jaw broke. So we all been in situations where we look past the, the tribal aspect of where you from and just get into your, your morals and your principles and who you are. And so my first encounter with YG, he was solid. You know what I mean? And he was, his, his energy was familiar. 
And so we did a record together, we was in the studio. And since then, every time he dropped an album, most of the time he'll reach out, huh? so I got one for us and vice versa. And um, you know, I was able to see YG career go from early mixtapes to really explode and becoming a superstar that he's become. And now he can see you becoming a superstar that he becoming. Make some more noise yeah, for Nipsey, yeah. we here. We having family talk here with Nipsey. Yeah. So, you know, I did my research and uh, a couple years ago you mentioned that your top three artists was Marvin Gaye, Bob Marley, and Tupac. Has that list for you changed? Man, I forgot about that list. I don't know where I said that. That's it's, why that's my job. It sound to familiar. Research, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. It sound familiar. Um, if I would say top three artists, um, I would have to put Stevie Wonder in there. I think Stevie why? Wonder, just because Stevie Wonder made all his music, he wrote all his words, he performed all his words, he been making music since he was a kid. You know what I mean? He got he got timeless records. You know what I'm saying? So I probably add Stevie Wonder in there. Pac, I would definitely keep in that list. Uh, and I gotta say Jay-Z at this point, yeah. Word up, so yeah, yeah, good list, good list. So let's go back to the 90s real quick. You was probably like 10 or 11 when the whole East Coast, West Coast rivalry was happening. What was your vantage point being a person from LA? Like th what, what did you see? What was your point of view with that whole East Coast, West Coast beef? Like was it the media hyped it up and all Pac and Big had to do was have a conversation or what did you see being, you know what I'm saying, from LA? I think it, it, was a, it was a number of things that went on. I think on one level, it was like, you know how people let the internet get the best of them right now? And they, they watching how the internet responded. Put the I gas. Think, yeah, they got, I think a little bit of that was letting the media get the best of the leadership in death row because they seen how, how excited and how much attention they was getting. And I think some of the energies over there ran with it because they think it'll sell records. Um, I think also Pac got caught up in gangbang politics. And Pac was from a lot of places. Pac spent time in b -more. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Yep. Pac spent time in New York. Pac spent time in a lot of places. So I think that when he came to LA, the streets embraced Pac and Pac was really for his people and for, and for the, just the gutter in general. And the culture in LA is gangbanging. So I think he kind of flirted with something real dangerous by, by involving himself in gangbang politics because he didn't have a upbringing in the 15, 20 years of, of watching how it can go bad and how delicate it is to know that's dangerous. That's, that's real. You got to be careful with that. And you know, even what happened at the, at the casino, it's gangbang politics that happened to Tupac. And so as a fan of music, I'm going to be honest, right? Niggas used to bang death row like a gang in LA as fans. Like this death row records, right? But we can never hate on bad boy because the music was so good. And we never looked at like, oh, it's East Coast, West Coast. We just like, we riding with Death Row because the music and they, they shoot their videos on Crenshaw and they artists is, 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 is representing the West Coast. But I don't think nobody on the West was on some like East Coast, West Coast. I think that was the media that came up with that. I think it was more like a competitive record label thing that went on between Bad Boy and, and Death Row. And you know, um, I think people let the, let the media kind of like influence their decisions a little bit. Like you see the internet doing right now. Social media got niggas all out their character doing goofy shit that they might have to pay for. But, but it's dope to see like, if we go back to last Thursday when he, uh, Nip opened up the Global Spin Awards, you got Nip on the stage, Snoop Dogg, Puff, that would have never happened in the 90s. So that's, it's just great to see from whence we came with all of that. So what's yeah. your relationship with Snoop, with Unk? Uh, you know, Snoop the homie, man. What's one thing about Snoop? Anybody in here ever met Snoop? All right, so y'all all know him already because he the same way. If y'all see him on TV or on his movie or on listen to him, you meet him in real life, he one of the niggas that, or artists that's the same exact way in real life as he is on camera. And I appreciate that about Snoop. He always got a blunt lit. You feel me? He a crip. At the age he at, he's still fully on his crip shit. Um, and you know, Snoop just a genuine, he a legend, man. You know, he, he always embraced the up-and-coming West Coast talent. You know, he, he was never one of them dudes that got low and disappeared. He always kept, stayed on the, on the front line and tapped in and done records and wasn't like no big superstar celebrity in his mind. He was like, you know, a dude that came from the streets and was blessed and won. And you got to think, like, Snoop went to trial for murder yeah. and beat the murder. You know what I'm saying? And went to, went to, the, went to prison and, 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 and jail in, in, in L.A. So, you know, Snoop is a rare story you don't see that type of success where he could do martha stewart tv shows and all that so snoop a one-on-one -on -one, man i got a number love and respect for snoop definitely so look 
Final question for you, Nip, and then we're gonna present you with some gifts. So, oh, I got, I get gifts. Yeah, that's yeah, you get gifts. Love, you, you know, up, you get love. love on the East Coast, Nip. Of you know course, what I'm you know, I, you got I, love I, for Nipsey Hussle. I ain't some question noise, that, You got man. love. Yeah, thank y'all. Thank y'all. You know yeah, yeah, thank y'all. You ain't got no love for you. Remember that? that yeah, I, I caught that. Yeah, no, I caught that. It went over their heads. It's I caught it. As I long as it. you caught it. I so, ain't say that. I, you know what's crazy? A lot of my streams and when I when I go on tour, I was just in DC uh, about an hour ago. Man, that was one of my best shows. Was in DC when I last time I went on tour. Shout out to DC in the building. You know what I'm okay. saying? Hey, yeah, yeah. I see y'all. Yeah. Oh yeah, the young homies. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, oh, that's the little homies in training. Yeah. Yo, what's up, y'all? Yeah. I see y'all. Salute. Nah, but you know, um, even New York, I, I get a lot of love uh, on the East Coast. I shot my video in New York for rap niggas. Word. I went to Brooklyn and we went to the Hamptons and shot a piece of the of, of the rap niggas video. So, I ain't never been one of them dudes that uh, consider myself regional. I, I fuck with realness and I fuck with you know. The streets everywhere. I know it's real niggas everywhere. I know I'm out of bounds and out of town everywhere but LA. So I move with respect and I, I salute all the real niggas everywhere. I think that that's a good way to end it. Victory lap, go cop now. Yeah, Nipsey yeah, Hustle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been your host, King Flexo. So let's get these gifts for, for my man. Yeah, let's get the gifts, man. I'm into that. Yeah. Who gonna help me? Dust, help me out with the bag. Yeah, come on up, Dust, because you got something to do with this first gift for the man, okay. for the boy, Nip. So yeah, do you place that up here? Love, man, love. I will give you the bag, but Puff gave me that. No, it's all good. We'll ain't... get you one, though. No, you know? I'm gonna take what, I, what I'm getting. What's up, bro? So the first gift, yeah, this is Dust. He represents the community outreach department at DTLR. So shout out to community outreach department at DTLR. You know, definitely, we we your fashion, your lifestyle, oh, look, the man. culture. Look, man, that's love. Yeah. So this joint right here. Yeah, thank you. Presented to yeah. Nipsey Hustle yeah. as we celebrate your victory lap. We know the marathon continues that's with the great fact. work yes, you sir. do in the community. Thank you from DTLR and Villa. Y'all clap some noise. it up, man. Make some noise. You know what I'm saying? For the for the for the community outreach. Hey, man, thank you for that, bro. That's love. I appreciate that. Yeah, Money. this mean a lot to me too, bro. I appreciate yeah. that. It took time and effort and energy to for do real. this, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. And then the second gift. So we got three gifts for that. So this right here is a limited edition uh, yeah, yeah, celebration yeah. bottle yeah, from Ciroc. Right. You know we Ciroc boys, you know. Yeah, yeah. The bar, I see it. Yeah, it's at the bar. Love, so this right you. here, the reason for this, and it, you know, celebration, right? Thank you. We celebrating a, a black man that is an entrepreneur, an artist, and she be looked at as one of our living legends for real. So make some noise Thank you for that. as Thank we you. celebrate. Thank you for that, bro. This is for you. Thank you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, From it's, us, Puff, the whole bad boy family. Love, man. Y'all get know, a we flick got of that, you. man. Get a flick of that. Oh, we got a light at the bottom? Well, no, nah, I got the piece. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, it's a, a second component bottom. to it. You know yeah, what I'm nah, saying? Okay. It's a second component. All love. So we got you, though. Nah, thank y'all for that, man. Again, man, it's my first time getting gifts out of at a pop-up, man, so. Yeah, you know I mean, make some noise. Don't drink it all at once, cause we celebrate. I got a squad, I got a squad with me. Oh, they squad! Gonna, so gonna yeah, gonna sip and pass, yeah. sip and pass. And this one, Rock, hold that right here, place. is another. Oh yeah, shout out to Blake, cause Blake did a lot of research on this joint. Shout out to Blake, and we we found out that years ago, and we're gonna find out if this is still true, that your favorite breakfast. <laughs> so if you do look, if y'all don't know Nip. Nip is not smoking right now, right? But you said, what, five months? It been like five months. Yeah, I ain't Dang. smoking no tree in like five. five. Who could go five months without? Who, and it, yeah, because you probably don't even smoke. All right? But you can't relate. I feel, it's all good. I ain't, I ain't on the anti-weed campaign, you know? I'm just on camera all day. I got a lot of shit to do, so I got to be focused. So this right yeah. here is if Nip does start get the, smoking. Get the munchies. Get the munchies. Yeah, yeah. You turn to your favorite cereal. This classic right here. This the is my favorite cereal. Crunch. Y'all did y'all research, uh, man. Yeah, shout out to Blake. So nah. love, love and respect. Hey, make some noise for the host and the whole setup, man. This was love. You know what I'm saying? We gonna drink the Ciroc. We gonna eat this cinnamon you know what toast. Huh. You should pour the Ciroc on the cinnamon toast crunch. I, Who be that high that they that, pour the liquor? That's a lot right there. I don't know. That's a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to definitely 
you know what I mean? This, this mean a lot, bro. Like I said, I ain't getting no gifts nowhere, man. So that y'all took time and put my name on a plaque and all that. That's love. I appreciate that. And shout out to all of Baltimore, the whole DMV, all the surrounding areas. I don't know who all in here from where, but I appreciate the love, y'all. Thank you. You deserve it. Get the album, too. Victory Lab, Victory man. Victory Lab. I'm, it's classic. Let's get it. Yeah. Love.